Welcome to this month's Q&A. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if it's this month's Q&A because I think we missed last month, so it's going to be today's Q&A. Now here's a fun first question that everybody wants to know. How do you control the ants around your hive? Now there's an interesting question. Are we talking about bull ants? Are we talking about sugar ants? Man, it doesn't really matter. Ants are a pain. That's what I know. One thing I have discovered is that ants are a problem when your hive starts getting weak. So it's a good idea to treat around the area where your hives are. Try to do it. Obviously, don't bait the jolly ants with sugar water and something horrible because the bees will take that up and won't do them any good at all. But the go is if you can keep your ant level down, that's cool. But on the other hand, a few ants around is a good way to decide whether your hive's struggling because if they're if ants are running up the side of your bee box and taking honey out of your super, then you know the bees are probably struggling and you should do something about it. So it's a it's not a bad early warning system actually. But having said that, control the ants before you put the hives down is a jolly good option. I've seen all the people with the legs and pots and all the rest of it. And you can do all that too if you want to. But you know, probably death to ants is the best option. Ah, my next question is, I wonder how many cups of coffee I have to start the day? Whew. Well, that's a jolly good question. I think I'm somewhere between three and five, depending on what day it is. <laughs> well, you can answer the second half of the question. Don't yeah, you? yeah, okay, smart ass. And the next part of the question is, I'm just wondering how his wife manages to tune out 96% of what he says and does. Well, that's pretty friendly, isn't it? Well, I'll just give you a hint. Anybody out there been married for 30 years, they've got selective deafness by then. <laughs> they don't, they don't, I swear she doesn't even notice unless it annoys the shit out of her. And then she just got that, I've learnt the fact when her eyes roll over and glaze over, I know I'm just talking to myself. And so sometimes that's enjoyable anyway. She can just be in the room and I can just work it out. And I get the occasional nod. How do you know how much honey to leave on your bees? Oh my gosh, that is a good question. Now that is very wide and broad, depending on where you actually are. I mean, if you're in, if you're in Canada, you're probably going to leave a lot more honey than we need to leave on our bees because we still get trees flowering in the middle of winter. So I normally probably, if it's me, I probably leave somewhere between four and five frames of honey on the top of the hives, but. Then on the other hand, if you don't want to do that and you want to take all your honey away, then you can back feed with some sugar syrup, which seems like a lot of work to me, but I'm lazy, so you know, feel free to do whatever you like. Young Sasha3456 is asking about our hive straps, which is kind of cool. They're just called hive locks as far as I know. They're just an Australian idea that you know, some clever fella, cleverer than me, dreamt up. And yes, as far as... In my opinion, they're a lot easier to use than ratchet straps, but then it depends how many hives you've got. I've actually, on that though, a very interesting point is I've bought several different versions of them. Be a bit careful about buying the cheap ones because the straps themselves, the metal is a little bit soft and a bit, uh, I don't know, how's it going and they don't last as long. So get the decent ones. Don't be a scab like me, buy the proper ones. G'day, most failure mustly. <laughs> no. Sheepers, lad. Most feely. How the hell am I supposed to pronounce that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> most fell masonry. Most fell Most fell masonry? Less, less masonry. Okay, I've come up with a new game. Everybody try to work out how the YouTube handles make any sense. I reckon it's awesome. I think we're going to have a new thing in this brood box and see if we can make the most unpronounceable YouTube handle for the Bush Bee Man, because this is really cool. Most filet masonry, and I love you, and I'm terribly sorry, 249, that I have no idea how to pronounce that. But you have a very interesting question, just the same. Where and how do you get the bee sites? Well, I tell you what, when you're new at the game, it's a pain in the bum to find enough sites. After a little while, people seem to know that you're a beekeeper, and next thing you know, you've sold somebody something, or you've talk to your mate who happens to know a bloke who happens to know a fella that's got a it is pretty random old school beekeepers somehow or other have got more balls of steel and they just roll into anybody's house and say hey i've noticed you've got some gum trees in the back paddock you mind if i throw a few hives down there and i don't know the farmer can say yay or nay so that's not very helpful but heck i tell you what it's a 
tight held position, these bee sites. I think I've found a winner, Felix the Cat. How good's that? Felix the Cat, 9027. Least I can pronounce that, that's awesome. Oh, mate, what is your question? I'm not sure if your first name is Felix, but I don't care, I'm gonna call you Cat. What do people do to keep their wax moths, Cat? I don't know, what do they do to keep the wax moths out of there? There's an interesting question. There's several different things you can do. If you've only got a few frames that you want to keep safe, you can stick them in the freezer and freeze the eggs and then you wrap them up and seal them up. That should keep them pretty safe pretty well. The other option you've got is to let them... Well... No. Can I say that? The other option you've got is you can use something called Phosphotrin, which is some people can use, which actually is like a, it's something that they use on a lot of different fruits and vegetables to keep the moths out of them. I don't know whether that's legal or not though. I think it's legal. I don't know. Not sure. I'm not sure if that's legally allowed to do it. I know people do it, but I don't, I don't do it, but I know people do do, do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you freeze if you freeze your frames, it'll kill all the eggs and all the moths that are on there. Well, obviously, the moths and the larvae will die, and it'll even freeze the eggs if you leave it in the freezer for three days. And then you can seal it up and then wait until next season. Or you could just go with, well, you know what, just melt it all off and start with fresh stuff the next year. But that's easier said than done. It depends how many hives you've got and how many frames you want to store. Quite often, people have a cool room or a shipping container that they keep cold. They'll put them in there. Heck, there's a few different options, but I'm probably not being as useful as I should be because I really enjoy the fact that your name, or your handle name is Felix the Cat. I reckon that's brilliant. Obviously, Ashley isn't trying to hide his identity quite as much as some of these other people, which is good. Ashley to Ashley. Ashley Holman, 2592 here on YouTube. <laughs> He's just wondering, they make bee suits, but you still get stung. I know, isn't that a fascination? Yes, you still get stung, and it doesn't even matter. Wait, I've bought blooming bee suits that cost a fortune, and you still get stung. God, the little stinkers just want to sting you. That's their whole purpose. Quite often it's because when the net will push up against your chin, or if you're silliness enough and you've actually jolly kept the bee, he gets runs inside the suit and bites you. No, they don't bite anyway, they sting. Or they run up your leg. That's the other thing that I've found is rather interesting. Especially you're moving hives in the dark and they'll run up your leg and up inside your suit. And somehow or other they make it all the way to the top of your, well, if you're lucky, they run past your bits and make it to the top of your suit and run around in there and then sting you on the nose or wherever. Or under the armpit. I tell you, that's one thing I don't like, getting stung under the armpit. That's not friendly. But yes, it's not 100% science to keep the bees out. But I tell you what, you try it naked and see how you get on. Young Jesse's asking, do I actually sleep in my hut that they made for me on the Outback Escape Show? I have to admit, I haven't actually slept in there completely, but I have sat in there on my chair and got out of the weather, which was rather cool, because one time I was down there, it was horrible weather, so I put my deck chair in there, sat in there and listened to my podcast and waited for the weather to clean up. So yes, thank you very much, Outback Escape. It's a cool place to hide from the storm. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, flick over to the Outback Escape Boys and check out what they're up to, because they're pretty cool. I reckon that my favourite one so far would have to be when they're in the outdoor adventures and swinging through the bloody sky doing crazy crap. I think they're on watching motorbikes this weekend, which would be cool. Thanks for your questions. I tell you what, it's fascinating. I got distracted by the names, which is probably a bit of a worry, but still. If you would like to get on the Q&A, send us your questions and hit. I can be full of great wisdom as I just was, maybe not. But anyway, or if you'd like to get a bit more response, jump into the brood box and heck, we can all kick around an idea between ourselves and figure out a solution to the problems that beekeepers face one day at a time. Gonna build a hut, gonna build a hut for the bush bee man, for the bush bee man. Gonna build a roof, gonna build a roof. As fast as we can, as fast as we can, and a big pergola to keep it cool. Built it all with just hand tools. Gonna build a hut, gonna build a hut for the bush bee man.